and welcome back to the retro review i am the bitter geek joining me as always is mikey the freak what's up bebo is taking a little hiatus right now uh we will welcome him back when he comes back today we are going to be discussing the movie stand by me stand by me sorry uh, Mikey the Freak, <laughs> don't you... think, please don't quit your day job. <laughs> Mikey the Freak, won't you tell us a little bit about this movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so a little bit about it. Uh, after the death of one of his friends, a writer recounts a childhood journey uh, with his friends to find the body of a missing boy. Uh, so that that is kind of the gist of the movie. Uh, it is mm-hmm. kind of told in narration uh, by uh, Richard Dreyfus. Mm-hmm. Uh, he plays the older version of um gordy so um it, it's <clears throat> excuse me it's one of those to where <clears throat> he's kind of i mean he is he's narrating the movie so he kind of talks over a lot of the scenes to kind of give the audience an idea of what's going on at that certain moment mm-hmm. um what is uh what, what's cool is that you know these four boys and they're kind of from different childhoods one uh which is um my mom went blank well they're, they're um, the same but different you know yeah they all have their own personal life traumas and mm-hmm. issues and uh cory feldman's character um um man my mind's going blank at it, this point that, i did i did watch the damn movie totally fine uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll just call him by yeah, their real name so Corey there Feldman's you go. yeah yeah, yeah. So, exactly so um because they always they just have weird names yeah. gordy and burn and it's like it's hard to remember all of them. so anyway um so yeah so Corey feldman's character you know they kind of show it at the beginning and they explain to him um about his ear and it's funny because when you swing i and i it's funny i never really noticed this i've seen the movie several times mm-hmm. but not really analyze the movie as much as we do now when we're watching these back um so when you're when they're talking to him and richard dreyfus is doing the narration on it and they're talking to um you know his character and talking to Corey feldman the camera kind of zooms in where it's almost just like a headshot you kind of see it like this as they're talking Mm -hmm. and the ear is like in the dead center (laughs) of the screen and i've never really noticed that at the beginning so as i'm seeing i'm like what's wrong with his ear swear to god yeah. i'm like what the hell so then they're explaining it as they so it was perfect um uh cinematography to kind of capture yeah. that at his, the right time while they're dad talking put his about ear it. on the stove for a punishment yeah so he's gone a lot of uh i found a it lot funny. of dad abuse <laughs> i found it funny that they say that and just gloss right over it and move on no more <laughs> yeah need- and they kind of they they mention a lot of issues well he, they don't he does where yeah. there there's a scene where he talks about oh why don't we just we'll kill his father and 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 go so they he kind of goes into like what he would actually do if it was um his dad or right so he makes that comment and you're like man he really has dad issues but it was it was clear from the director rob reiner to make sure that they uh really highlighted the differences between each kid and to kind of understand and it was funny i kind of i kind of see a reference to goonies a little bit yeah you do a <laughs> you little saw bit. That yeah too. i mean, yeah, I mean and, even and it don't cory feldman it don't help, yeah. yeah i was about to say it don't help that cory feldman is in there yeah each one of these kids yeah. are dealing with their own personal trauma that they're dealing with yeah and uh that's why they're friends at this point kind of uh, if yeah and like... they, they yeah and they kind of come together um as a group you know they set all their matters aside all their personal issues aside and they come together and they talk it out and they have those crying scene those crying moments where they really river phoenix's character really opens up yeah. um and starts talking to gordy which is played by will wheaton mm-hmm. um you know and starts crying while they're right there by the by the fire yeah river phoenix um, turns into like the big brother character yeah, yeah, because you know Will Wheaton's character, Gordy's character, his uh, his brother Denny had passed away, uh, gotten killed, and they basically his parents disowned him. He d- thought he wasn't worth a damn because they thought that Denny was, you know, Denny was the favorite to him. He yeah. was the big brother, um, you know. And for such a short role, you know, John Cusack played that character. 
Um, I thought he did pretty well with the short. He probably took him 30 minutes to film that scene and then yeah, he flew out and went home. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't long at all, but um, you, you kind of see that from, from Gordy's character understanding where he misses that big brother. He misses that person to talk to um, and, and kind of leans on his friends uh, to have those conversations. And he misses his brother dearly, of course. And this is kind of one of those ways to where um, he can bond with his friends and have that one-on-one time and prove to his dad, you know, like, even though you think he's the, he's the, um, the favorite, I'm the one that's still here. It wasn't my fault. You can't blame me for his death. Um, so, and then you see Jerry O'Connell's character, Vern, um, it's almost like the chunk (laughs) of the Goonies, you know, they kind of make fun of him at first because he was the heavy kid and, and, um, I kind of said, oh, he's going to tell him to do the truffle shuffle. <laughs> <laughs> and again, it's Corey Feldman's character yeah. instigates most of it. So Yeah, exactly. I'm like, God, he's doing that character again. He's playing the um, same character. He was playing the exact same, same character. Same exact character, just with glasses. Um, but, it, you know, it, it's one of those, you know, they, need, they have the the bullies, which is like Keith or Sullivan, mm-hmm. uh, Sullivan. I did it again. Kiefer Sutherland. There you go. Sorry, sorry, Bebo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then Casey Samosco. Um, so you you have those those characters that uh, are those actors that play those characters where they're the older group, and then you have the kid group, mm-hmm. and the older group are the ones that cause the trouble. They're the bullies, or the ones that pick on everybody, which is almost like a Lost Boys. I saw Lost Boys in this too. Yeah, <laughs> just so weird. Uh, how it just meshes together, it, but it was an eighties movie. If you watch this, yeah, yeah, if you watch these, if you watch those movies, and you'll see Goonies and you'll see Lost Boys. The same type of, it is the same genre. Of course, it's the eighties. We get that part, and it's the same type characters. Um, but it's uh, it's almost like it meshes together. So it kind of helps you understand the characters and where the actors were coming uh, to portray these characters. So you kind of be like, oh, okay, I get it. That's that's a pretty cool character. Yeah, this I like, like that an guy. 80s movie, but supposed to be in the, I want to say 50s. Did it, was it 50s or 40s or 50s? I think it was in the 50s. 50s uh, yeah. I would think 50s based on Richard Dreyfuss' age. You figure I know it that was they 86, mentioned it, but I can't probably 30 remember. something years. I know that they mentioned it, but I can't, I can't for the life of me remember. It was probably at the beginning. So I don't, yeah. I don't recall, but I would assume it's the 50s. So there's Back to the Future um, in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, there is a Back to the Future in there. Francis Lee McCain, or Ann McCain is in there. So, mm-hmm. that kind of, uh, or Francis Lee McCain, sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, she's in there. So, there's a Back to the Future reference. But, um, you know, the, the, the movie, it, it, it follows these four boys in their trip. You know, the quickest way to get to where they thought this dead body was, which, uh, Vern overheard the older boys talking about he was hiding under the uh, hiding under the staircase or under the house, basically. Mm-hmm. And he overheard that uh, Casey Samosco's character <clears throat> and the other guy was actually um, they did it. They killed this kid and they they hid the body and they no, no one's going to find this kid. No, oh no, no, he was hit by the train. He was oh, hit by the train. No, place. yeah, I'm and sorry. They, yeah, they, yeah. they found the body because they 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 were dumping a car that they that they stole. Yes, yes. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. So so they knew they knew exactly where the body was. And then when they figured out when they were offering a reward for to find the missing kid, the now it was like two different teams trying to get there first. Yeah. Who's gonna get there first? Um, but you know, Jerry O'Connell, they started and said, Hey, let's go find a dead body. So they all basically got together and said, yeah, let's do it. We have no adventures. There's nothing mm-hmm. to do here. Let's go on an adventure and go do something. Yeah, they could get their name in the paper. They could get an award. They could probably, you know, they could probably be on TV because they found the missing kid's body. That's really, exactly, the, that's yeah. really the premise of the movie. They're out just to see a dead body. That's basically all they're wanting to do. They travel yeah. down the train tracks to find the spot and see a, see a body. That's basically yeah. the premise of the movie. Yeah, and it comes it comes down to you know the train tracks was the quickest way 
to get there. Safest um, way, you know, too, yeah. safe, safest way. Yeah. So, you know, not falling roads or through trees or forests or mm -hmm. anything, but, um, you know, and they come up with a couple perils, you know, there's a train coming mm -hmm. and one of the biggest climactic scenes that they really have uh, on their journey, I'd say one of them, um, is that, you know, they have this long ass bridge with nowhere to go. So if mm -hmm. a train comes, they literally are going to have to jump or, or run as fast, yeah. as, <laughs> yeah, run fast as hell. And of course you see the writing on the wall. Of course there's a train that's yeah. going to show up. There has to be, right? Yeah. And, and I thought this was kind of funny. It kind of hit back home. So, and you'll probably remember it. We used to walk everywhere, yes. right? Oh. Or ride our bikes, everywhere. right? So this kind of reminded when me and you walked up town a couple miles In and Walmart, we took the train yeah. tracks by the house, which the train tracks, have, you know, nobody really knows where we live, but Kevin was on, you know, uh, Bearded Geek was on one side of the tracks and I was literally on the other yeah. side of the tracks, literally opposite side of the tracks. So we would actually meet at his house. And if we wanted to go downtown, we would walk the train tracks and it went straight downtown. Yep. So it was funny because we would, you know, try to balance ourselves just we related, like they did. We related to this. I, I related to this. Movie Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Everything that, you know, we did as a kid and it, I mean, we were pretty young then too, probably 13, 14, yeah. give or take. Roughly 15, the same maybe. age as these kids. Yeah. Yeah. And so we decided, you know, we, we would go that way. And, and I always laugh because I got the idea of touching the train rail just like just like he did in the movie <laughs> and I, I don't think that shit worked i don't think so it didn't <laughs> because, work for him <laughs> <laughs> it definitely didn't work for him um but i i guess he tried to sense you know the vibration and stuff yeah. the heavy locomotive coming to you and so forth but um i tried to do that and i'm just like oh yep nope i don't feel no vibration of course there wasn't a train coming no. and i'm not gonna try that shit when a train's coming to see if it works <clears throat> but but I kind of laughed when they did that. And I'm like, that's where I got it from was <laughs> from, the, from this movie. Yeah. <laughs> so it kind of hit back home when we were younger. Um, you know, so they had that climactic scene. And one of the other scenes that I liked uh, was the, uh, when they decided let's veer off of the tracks. Let's try to not play it safe. Let's live outside. Let's be dangerous. Take a shortcut. And let's take a shortcut right through those dangerous, mm -hmm. right through those woods. And of course, they run into a a lake, man-made pond, pond. which yeah, actually like a, like a marsh. <laughs> it was more of a marsh. I would call it more of a marsh. Yeah, yeah, swampy type uh, um, uh, pond. But yeah, they um, you know like oh, it's not too deep. Let's let's walk across. It's a lot quicker. And then two step, one, two, boom, yeah. and they're over their heads in water. So I thought that was funny. And then they come out and they got leeches all over their body and. Uh, I, I don't the, the, the weirdest leech, the scene, leech on the nuts yeah yeah the weirdest scene on that is when he's like oh my god and he yeah. gets all gets all crazy and he picks it up and he's got blood all over his hands because you know the leech actually gave him a blowjob so <laughs> oh it was, my god <laughs> it's like oh my god it's all over my penis yeah so uh it, it's it was just a weird scene. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I'd never want to run into leeches ever. <laughs> ever. Nay, nay. Uh, so, yeah. So, I mean, so, so tell me, Bearded Geek. So tell me what you thought a little bit about the movie so far. Uh, yeah, it was, it, it had a great cast. It was yep. shot very, it was shot pretty well. Um, You know, it, it, it told a story that I related to. Um, yeah. With the dead body? <laughs> <laughs> no, the walk in the train tracks, uh, having <laughs> having a group of friends that young. I mean, you you remember our group of friends back then? Oh yeah, it, you know, they had mean, about four or five of us. Yeah, same, that, type, I mean, that's, same type age groups. That's all we did, man, was hang out, play sports mm -hmm. in the backyard and stuff like that. But I mean, we were tight, uh, so I understand. Yeah, I I related. Um, I I got it, I got it, and uh, and it was a. Uh, like I, I don't think I've ever watched this movie all the way through until this last time since I watched it, mm -hmm. and it, it um I, I really related to it more now than I have in the past. Let me put it that way. Yeah, I think we understood it. I mean, I guess we understand it more now. I watched it 
I mean, it's been years, probably 10 plus years since I've seen it, but I understand the uh, the movie. I've seen it all the way through right. several times. And it, it, again, the reason why I like this movie so much is it does relate to our childhood. It does relate to our friendship that we had um, with, you know, almost the whole, you know, the neighborhood, there mm-hmm. was like five or six of us that always would hang out together. Um, and it was, it was one of those to where we were, we were always together. If my mom didn't know where I was, she knew I was at least over at your house. Yeah. Like, she's like, where's Mike? Oh, he's d- probably over at the yeah. Geek's house. Yeah. Yeah. We're in that area. Yeah. yeah. We're over in that area. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, so that I did. I, I related as well as it too. All right, how about ratings, man? Why don't you go ahead and um, give your rating on the movie? Yeah. Um, I, I rated this one a fairly high. Um, I gave it an eight, a solid eight. Um, I like the way it was shot. I love the storyline. Um, I think the actors, um, they did very, very well when it came to, um, playing or portraying <clears throat> that type of character to understand like what they're going through and the emotion that they went through. Um, you know, Will Wheaton, uh, just came out, um, literally had been a couple weeks ago, uh, on uh, the show that Jerry O'Connell does. I think it's The View. I think he's on The mm. View now or Talk or something like that. But mm. anyway, um, he actually said that he went through a lot of spouse or spousal shit, parent, uh, parental abuse. Um, they pushed him uh, to become an actor, uh, his mom and his dad, and really put him through a lot of harsh abuse, verbal, physical um to have him become successful when he was that eight, like while he was filming stand by me oh, wow. and he didn't really go through, he didn't really tell anybody uh, and almost until now, you know, so Jerry O'Connell kind of felt uh, bad and he's like, how, how would you know? I didn't tell nobody. So it's not your fault. You're right. 11 years old. Right. <clears throat> so you, you kind of understand that the, that this movie, like they really embraced their characters a lot more um then you would assume you know you're 11 years old how well can you do and these these four kids did very very well at the time they were very mature um for their age when it comes to the, the roles that they were in um i felt felt that the portrayal of the the bully with with uh Kiefer sutherland's uh, character um how he was the 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 instigator of the uh the older group mm-hmm. um and in how he was like you know, he's the the leader, I guess you could say. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I like that portrayal and what they went through. And the, the story really stayed mostly on the kids and each one of their problems at home uh, and, and really to understand. So I think that's really where I liked it. And I read the I read the book, the body, not the whole thing. I didn't get through the whole thing, um, but I have read some of it. And I felt that what I've read and based on what the actual movie says mm-hmm. um, was very well. And one of the Stephen King, when, when Rob Reiner got done with filming or screening the movie for Stephen King, um, Stephen King was almost, he was in shock. He was speechless. He had, you know, nothing to say and he left the room. So Rob Reiner was, was worried, like, what the hell just happened? So when Stephen King came back into the room, he compelled himself and our compiled and, and, and came to himself and said, this was the best adaptation of the movie from book to movie that he's ever seen. At that time, and at this yeah. Po- at that time, yeah. yeah. And, and at this point, you know, this was 86. Um, so he had two big movies out. Uh, Cujo was 83. Mm-hmm. So that was a big book to movie adaptation. Uh, and then The Shining was one of the biggest movies in 1980. Um, from that was also a book to movie adaptation. Right. So you know, to say that to Rob Reiner, I felt would been huge, oh, tremendous. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so I think they did their job, and that's why I gave it an eight. A great movie to watch. I'd recommend it to everybody. Uh, just a, uh, I'd say a fun movie, but uh, very dramatic and and fun to easy to follow and so forth yeah well to piggyback off of you and to fall right off that sure. pig's back i'm gonna give this a six <laughs> <laughs> off that pig's back yeah um, they just bust you right off didn't they <laughs> yeah listen um it, it it it's better than it's better than right in the middle but it's yeah i, I was in my phone a lot during this movie it is so slow paced. Oh, really? yeah it is very slow no, i agree with that yes 
Um, I definitely agree it with that. Did not hold my attention very well. I followed it. Um, I related to it, but that don't mean it held my attention. Um, Correct. Yeah. Some of the jokes that they had in the movie is like whatever. Um, it, it, it it's <laughs> yeah. it's um I got to. it don't hold up for me. It 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 just yeah. it the movie don't hold up in my personal opinion. I I could not recommend this movie to anybody. Um, I I, I give it a straight six, just a straight six. It was shot very well. Um, the cinematography was very good. The acting mm. was very good. I just it, it's one of those movies that just it didn't hold my attention. It's a periodic movie to where it was you can it's supposed to be set in the forties, fifties, but yet you yeah. you knew it was an eighties movie and it, it won't relate to our newer generation because and, there's not a lot of modern Right. era type move product and stuff like that. I agree. No, I know I get it. And I it, definitely understand. And it kind of left me sad. Like the, the movie ends with, yeah, after this event, you know, we separated from uh Jerry O'Connell and Corey Feldman's character and uh River Phoenix and him, yeah, he he, he River Phoenix became a uh what was it? An arc he did something with his life, but he ended a lawyer. He ended up becoming a lawyer. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, he, he hadn't seen him in years, and then he found out he died. Uh, he got stabbed at a, you know, just a random, at a grocery yeah. store fight. And uh, that's really how it ends. It's just like, okay, that's just sad as shit. You know? Yeah, all right, mine's a, mine's a six now. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> it, it left me feeling sad. Like, I didn't, you know, it was a good movie, and then it ends like, you know, oh, bum, bum fest. Yeah, sorry. I mean, like you'd like to see them. You'd like to see them like at the funeral and re, you know, come together. At and, least, yeah, or that kind of deal. Yeah, or at least come together with the other two that are still alive. I mean, it's just yeah, yeah. It is what it is at this point. So, I get it. Yeah. So, uh, I without any movie trivia, I do have some movie memorabilia. Mm. See, I have. Oops, not related reels. I flipped on the wrong thing. Movie memorabilia. There we go. <laughs> I have. <laughs> you have a Stand By Me 1986 original movie poster, rare Pez version. The Pez version. Has, Pez version. Yep, That's different. For, you can get it for $115 with $6 shipping. Oh, that ain't bad. You put it up on your wall. Yeah. Yeah. We also have a rare replica of Corey Feldman's ear in, <laughs> in Stand By Me. You can get the replica. I thought that was. Yeah, go ahead. I'm yeah. Sorry. Uh, no, you can get the replica for 130 bucks. Which I, I honestly, thought that was the strangest shit I've ever. When you showed that to me, I'm like, what? It's strange. Okay. I it, get it. It's strange, but I get it. And if you're a Stand yeah. By Me fan, that's probably something you, you'd want, in all honesty. Uh, and I'm sorry if I, if I, you know, I've gotten his autograph at Comic Con. Mm-hmm. He's a very, very strange individual. He'd love um, that. He would love that. He, I think he would, yeah, I think he would like that and he would sign it. But if I got anything signed, which I did, I, it was Goonies the right. whole way. Uh, yeah, because we're just Goonies. Yeah, of course. And the last that would thing... be interesting. Be like, hey, look at your ear. <laughs> <laughs> the, oh, that's awesome. The last thing I have is a Stand By Me graded. VHS copy. It's graded a 7.5 near mint. You can get it for a thousand dollars. Free shipping. It's probably a pretty good grade grade too. Probably. That's all I got Hmm. for movie memorabilia. How about now it's time for some related reels? What you got for it? Yeah, yeah. So um I kind of went with a few of the main characters. Um we talked about Will Wheaton a little bit. Um he's done a lot of uh you know tv shows and and cameos and some stuff so Mm -hmm. really the the biggest thing that i like um star trek uh he was in the next generation of course course. um and he he has a recurring role like picard he showed up in picard which is the new series Mm -hmm. that's out last year um he was in the in the movie flubber with um robin williams which Mm -hmm. is uh, that's always a cute movie it's a disney movie it's always cute yeah um you know, and The Last Starfighter, which The Last Starfighter is a decent movie from the 80s. Interesting type movie from the 80s, but he does make a, a, a um, I'd say cameo, but he's in that movie as well. 
Um, I was going to pick Richard Dreyfuss. Well, before, Richard before Dreyfuss, we move on, uh, Will Wheaton yeah, also sure. had a lot of cameos in uh, uh, The Big Bang Theory. Yes, yes, yeah. he did, yes. Um, you know, I, I was going to go with Richard Dreyfuss, but, you know, everybody knows Richard Dreyfuss, third, close to Calendars of the Third Kind, mm-hmm. and Jaws, and a um, lot of big movies. He's one of the A-plus characters what out there. Bob? What about Bob? Yeah, what about Bob? I don't know if I'd put what about Bob in there, but he was pretty good. And um, Stakeout, another Stakeout. That's be yeah. another one. That's, that's kind of like he made that movie. What the hell? Okay, um, I did pick John Cusack. Um, so uh, funny thing about John Cusack is uh, he was actually at Comic Con a couple of years ago. He was only there one day, uh, which was a Saturday, and I heard nothing but negative and terrible things about him. He was horrible to fans he was just mm-hmm. rude and, now, and this I was is all like, hearsay really? no no first hand knowledge all, this is all hearsay yep i wasn't there i wasn't there but that's what they said and i was just like wow you wouldn't you just don't expect that from from any artist uh mm-hmm. comedian or actor anybody that does those comic cons because they're there for the well, fans everybody's human though you could have been having yeah. a bad day uh or maybe like i said it's just hearsay it could not be true yeah, he could have lost a role or something and be like, oh, that would have made my career. Um, but some movies that John Cusack was in that I, I really like, Say Anything, which was a, a big 80s movie mm-hmm. that kind of put him on the map as an actor. Because um, this one wasn't as big because he really didn't have a big role. Yeah, he was in the um, movie for five, less than five minutes. Literally, yes, less than five minutes. Um, Hot Tub Time Machine, uh, which is a hilarious fucking movie. Y'all got to watch Hot Tub Time Machine um con air which mm-hmm. is a great movie nicholas cage uh and then a a, a horror suspense uh 1408 I don't so think i've seen that one. Oh, 1408 is a great he does a lot of destruction movies like 1408 was one that was kind of weird um uh then he had uh the one that was 2012 the movie yeah. 2012 he was in a um a ship that a uh, ship uh, um it was a ship water ship because the whole world was going to flood or the area was going to flood so they made these giant ships okay. like a, one of those disaster type movies so a couple um, of number movies yeah exactly 1408 <laughs> 2012 i get it um jerry o'connell um i kind of picked him because uh some of the movies that he's been in are just career you would think it's career ending but i think <laughs> <laughs> bro but I think that his name back out on the talk show. How he stayed um, relevant is beyond me. Well, it's how exactly. I really, it's just like him and his brother, just, just both oh. O'Connell's are just yeah. like far out there. So um, he was in a, sh- a show called Sliders, which I love Sliders. I did like Sliders, uh, yeah. Sliders was a great movie, alternate realities mm-hmm. and alternate universes and time zone. I thought that was a great adaptation. That was pretty awesome. Especially the little uh, cheeseburger sliders, also good. I love cheeseburger sliders. It's so good. Um, and then uh, show called, a movie called Tomcats. <laughs> Tomcats with uh, Jake Busey. <laughs> Another movie. You're like, what the hell? Jeez. Y'all can you can watch Tomcats if you want to. It is a crazy. It was uh, Jake Busey and uh, Elizabeth. Yeah. Oh, the one from American Pie. Um, um, yeah, that yep, one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The one with the big boobs. Yeah, yeah. An American um, pot. Yeah. Can't remember um, her name either. I see her face. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, I see more than her face. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> um he was in Scream 2. Jerry O'Connor was actually in Scream 2. Okay. Um <clears throat> yeah, and then the biggest movie that was a, his career ending movie was Joe's Apartment. If you've ever know about Joe's Apartment, seen about Joe's Apartment, it was his apartment is he's he's Joe, of course. Was this and an, of course I can't remember. Was this the, the MTV the, movie? <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, the one with that, the cock. It's no one said. with the cockroaches. No said. They were That's, talking cockroaches, right now. <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh my god! The more you, the more you, I'm remembering. Oh my god! So bad. Hey, Joe. <laughs> You're like the fuck. Oh my god! I can't believe I <laughs> yes. even remember any of that. It's one of those. It was one of those movies to where it, I think it killed his career. Yeah, and um, it it really like was so stupid and corny at the same time that you can't not forget about the movie. Like it wasn't very funny, yeah. but it was just 
corny. Yeah, and you're just like, corny. what the hell? Um, and then just the last person I wanted to mention, just kind of a honorable mention, was Frances Lee McCain. She's not in the movie a lot either. She's probably in there less than 10 minutes. She mm-hmm. plays uh, Gordy's mother. Um, that's kind of in distraught. Who else's, mother, who else's mother does she play? Oh, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, Michael J. Fox's mother? Maybe, oh, I'm sorry. No, I can no see it's Michael's not. Mother. <laughs> sorry. Lorraine's mother. There you go. <laughs> Michael J. Fox's sorry, mother-in-law. Um, yes, yes. Uh, no. So she was Stella and Stella Back to the yeah. Future. And uh, she was also in The Gremlins. So oh, the yeah, Gremlins was, was the a good one. Oh, yeah. Yep. She was also the mother in the Gremlins, too. Well, she's a good mother. She's a great mother. All right. All right, guys. Yeah, that's all I got, buddy. Yeah. As we come to a close, <laughs> make sure you do all the YouTuber things to give us a good old thumb and hit that like, subscribe, leave a comment, tell us what you thought of this movie. Uh, what movie should we review in the future? We want to know. Yeah. All right. I do believe that does it for this episode of Back to the Retro Review. For Mikey the Freak, I am the Bearded Geek saying, keep it retro, everybody. Peace.